then if you can help me pass it. Kenny, uh, that was quite the end game situation. Can you uh, <laughs> walk, us, walk us through all of that from your perspective and, and then how you go about the match? Yeah, I love going into details on things. I'm not going to go into details on that one. We won the football game. We beat another ranked team in Sun Devil St in Mountain America Stadium, right? And uh, this is all about the guys. I mean, these guys battled, these guys fought, these guys found a way to win, and it doesn't matter whatever happened at the end, it happened. You know what, we got to rush the field twice. How about that? We rushed the field three times this year, that's pretty cool. Not many people get the opportunity to do that, come to Arizona State, because there's gonna be a lot more of that coming forward. Michelle up front. Kenny, can you talk about the decision to go for the fourth down instead of the field goals? Uh, what both seemed like they were making the field goals? Uh, so the end of the first, uh, the half, when we obviously went for it, we got it. In the first half, we were two for two and fourth downs. Second half, it was fourth and four, right? We're up 18. So really, a few, either way, they have to score three touchdowns to beat you, okay? Well, if you kick a field goal, just three touchdowns ties you. So, but if you score there, you go up four possessions. So really, we're trying to say, okay, if we don't get it, they have to go 96 yards, okay, to score, which is low percentage. So do, the question is, do you want to tie the game if they score three touchdowns? No, you want to be winning by four touchdowns, and you want to make them go 96. Now, they went 96, so that wasn't ideal, but uh, but that was the strategy behind it. We wanted them to pin them deep if we didn't get it, and if we got it, we take a four-possession lead instead of tying if they score three touchdowns. A Doug, and then Pat, you turn the mic on. Thank you. Hey, Kenny, your, your clock management has been masterful all season, but could you just help us understand when you get the ball back after the interception? Why not just run the ball and get to the heart just try to score in that situation? Because, I mean, if you score, there is a, they have a minute left. There is a chance that they, they could score, kick, and onside kick and win. In reality, there was a point where there was under 12 seconds left to go in the game. We have two plays, right? Well, each play should take roughly six to seven seconds if you're in a delay scenario. So the first one, we tried to delay, and it only took four and a half. So then there was five seconds. Then there were seven seconds left. And we rolled out. We threw the ball away, and it landed at the end. Uh, it should take a certain amount of time. Uh, through a lot of reps, through a lot of programs. Uh, there's a lot of statistics behind that thought process, and uh, we won the game. But I'm not gonna, obviously we all know what happened at the end, it is what it is, who cares? Uh, won the football game, this guy to my right, three touchdowns I think in the first half, unbelievable Sun Devil, right? First time we've been undefeated in this stadium since before he maybe was born, where were you born? Two. Oh no, he was born, he was two. <laughs> right, the last time we were undefeated in this stadium, and for him to be a part of that's unbelievable. Patrick and Jordan. Yeah, so Cam going on. You've had a lot of great games this year. Kenny has talked about multiple times how he challenged you in the offseason to be able to play on Sundays in the NFL at one point. This game just felt a lot more special. The way you came out, all the energy, obviously coming back to your first game last week against Kansas State, well went into it, but just allowed you to dominate a lot in the first half and make crucial plays down the stretch. Um, because he doesn't he didn't just challenge me throughout the offseason, he's challenged me every day. Um, he knows when I'm having a bad day or an off day or looking sluggish, and um, he, he gets on me about it. So, um, I mean, I'm doing my best to put in the work because I understand the talent I have and I could play at the next level. Um, but if I don't put, a work, put the work in, it's not going to happen. So um, with him challenging me and me trying my best to you know, put in all the work, it's just, it just it's all paying off. And that's why I respect him so much, and everybody loves him because everybody – understands he's doing it for the right of us and look we're nine and two and we're in first place. Got Jordan over here. Get back to Doug. Jordan Ham Sports 360 Z Kenny, uh first time that ASU has had the nine win mark since twenty fourteen. You were part of both of those programs. How are these two teams similar and how are they different? Uh, I would say they're a lot different. Just you know, everything's a lot different. I would say the similarity is the toughness. Uh, that was a really tough team. Uh, just mentally, physically and I think uh, we have that similarity. The difference is just, you know, these guys, a lot of these guys are new and they came together and um, are coming off a horrible season, right? That team had some expectations. That team was coming off, you know, a good season and, and uh, you know, they had some momentum. You know, these guys came off no, no, no momentum with everybody doubting them, everybody's still doubting them. And uh, that's what makes this special. I mean, I don't know how, how long I'll be here, well, hopefully a long time, but the I don't know if I'll ever have a season that over, uh, exceeds expectation than this year. I, I don't know, hopefully the expectations become higher. I don't know if there's a way we can exceed expectations more than we're exceeding them right now. And I think that's special, it's because of these two guys. Uh, they both grew up this year, they both matured. Yeah. 
The Franz the Franz the Book podcast. Kenny, why did you call a timeout at the end of the first half one first. before the BYU field goal? In case they missed it. So if I'm in that situation on offense, I'm going to wind the clock down and I'm going to kick a field goal with three seconds left, right? Well, I wanted to make sure that they knew that there was still time left. So if one or if they were going to go, just kind of dictate to them their hands. So then if they missed the field goal, we kind of go and drive the field. So I just wanted to make sure that they had a little bit more pressure of uh, having to make the kick. And if they missed it, then, you know, we got an opportunity uh, to go down the field and try to score. And number two, open up about 2023. What was the lowest point of last year for you to get to where you are now? The lowest point of last year uh, had to be Utah, right? I mean, that was a beating. It doesn't get worse than the Utah game last year. I mean, yeah. That, I mean, our one touchdown versus Utah got called back for blocking the snapper in the back. If it doesn't get worse than that, then uh, I, I don't know. Yeah, Utah, for sure. Jesse, then Luke. Coach, uh, you're calling. You know, obviously, it's not hard to get juiced up for next week's game. But, you know, uh, it's obviously not the level of opponent that you all face this week. How do you just kind of keep the guys locked in and, you know, make sure that they take this next game as important as this last week? Yeah, I mean, if we have to get excited to play our rival who whooped our butt last year, then we're not the team I think we are. Uh, and then at the same token, I think they have what people say is the number one wide out that's going to be drafted, they have an NFL quarterback. They have a left tackle who's mocked in the first round. Any team that has two first-round draft picks has the talent and the ability to win and make plays. Uh, but for us, process. This feels great. It's even better than it's a day game. Have fun. Enjoy it. Wake up. Move on. Repeat the process. Because nobody cares what you did yesterday. And nobody's going to care if we turn out to be a 9-3 and football team that misses the Big 12 championship. Nobody will care. It will be a flash in the pan. We want to continue to do something special. You got to do it every single day, and you've got to be able to repeat it. Colin, for all of you guys, uh, obviously the win today, Colorado lost as well. You're in the driver's seat, you know, Big 12 championship game. Can you put in perspective kind of this turnaround that you guys have created and now have everything in, in front of you? Uh, I mean, the boys, the boys, are, you know, they 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 fought every day. Um, like we go back to the summer workouts, everybody fights every single day. Um, we didn't blink out there when, you know, they started scoring points and we weren't. Uh, we came back, scored a touchdown, and um, got a comfortable lead, and then they scored again. So um, we just keep fighting. Uh, these guys got a lot of heart. This kid right here, you know, he's, he yelled at me, you know, don't be selfish. We looked at each other. All right, let's go. So it's just the, the culture's changed, man, and everybody loves each other. And, um, we've, we've, we've turned this thing around, but it's not finished yet because there's still process. There's still work to do in the process. Um, it's amazing. Um, it's just a testament to the team. Um, they counted us out, man. They counted us out, and we continue to keep working and proving the haters wrong. Um, I got a tattoo right here. It's a diamond in a row. That, that just describes this team, just a diamond in a row. And we just keep working and shoot pressure build diamonds. That's what happened today. Doug, and then get it to Chris. Two questions. Cam, can you uh, maybe explain the whole um, touchdown autograph session there that you had? And then uh, after that. <laughs> yeah, explain it. <laughs> I'd love to hear all about it. That's actually one of my, one of my boys. Um, he, the touchdown before, he held the ball out in the Sharpie, and I talked to my team, my, my lineman. I was like, next touchdown, I'm going to go sign, try to get behind me so the refs don't see it. Um, that was on me. That was on me. Um, I made that mistake, so that definitely won't happen again. You know, uh, one time thing. I think that might be my second, my second personal flag, in my entire life. Um, so I think the the thought of just going over there and feeling that after a touchdown was was awesome. And um, I mean, if they were, if they needed me on kickoff the next for, next for that twenty yard kick or whatever, I would have been there. But. Uh, we got handled. So. <laughs> and then, can you real quick some, yeah. some news surfaced before the game that ASU has locked up your coordinators for the next three years? Can you just uh, comment on what that, what kind of message that sent you to the program? Yeah, it shows the direction of the program, how there's going to be consistency here in a world where there's very little consistency. But I mean, if you look at you know those guys out there, like I wore this shirt today, right, for the Sun, the Sun Angel Collective, for a purpose. Is if you had fun watching him play and make those pay those plays. Like, it was there all night. It was there all night because it's a different day and age in college football. And if that was something that we want to continue to do, 
then what's that saying? Pay the man his money, right? Isn't that like a saying? Like, pay the man his money. Like, pay these guys what they deserve to be paid. Because right now, our team is underpaid. And we're doing more with guys who just got it out the mud. But eventually, you should get what you deserve. And our guys deserve more. And that's why we're this. Well, a couple more for Coach, and then we'll get to the guys. Um, get it back to Sam. Sammy, you got one. And Doug, if you could get it up. Jose. Start with Jose. And then. Hey, can you kind of describe a little bit about just your mentality of unit? You're aggressive on the fourth downs. Just kind of being aggressive overall with the play calling and what you're seeking to do. Uh, trying to keep the momentum when you have it. Yeah, so I got a major, like, cramp right now. That's, uh, oh, ouch. Uh, keep the momentum, obviously, fourth downs. There's some, uh, you know, like I said, like making a team go 96 yards. So, you, like, you have two fourth and ones we're going to go for right now. So, like, if you can't get fourth and ones consistently, you're not going to be a good team anyway, so who cares, right? So we're going to go for it. But, you know, when you start to go to those aggressive fourth down calls, right, it's really just time of the game, field position, and score. And I kind of alluded to why we went for the, the one uh, to start the third quarter. Was that was we were playing good defense, making them go 96. They get three, then they're down 15. Who cares? You're still in the driver's seat. You score a touchdown. Right now, you take a four position lead as opposed to kicking a field goal, taking a 21 point lead. They still have to get three touchdowns. So you changed nothing of what they had to accomplish, and you gave them the ball in the 25 instead of the four. Right? So just the risk first reward there. Uh, but that was the thought process. Uh, Chris and Sammy, then we got to let Coach go. Uh, Kenny, just. The difference between the first and second half, what did that feel like? And what, were, what was the mood on the sideline? What were you saying as the game kind of tightened? Guys, we're still winning. Like, you know, it gets tighter and tighter. Guys, we're still winning. Like, we're still winning. Relax. We're going to make one play. All you got to do is make one play. The rest of the game, we win. All right? We catch the ball in the end zone, right, on the play before we went for it, win the game. All right? We get the fourth and one. Uh, when there's two minutes and whatever, 30, 40 seconds left, right? Win the game, right? We make one sack or one interception, win the game. So many times, just one play. And guess what? We got it. We got the play. We got the play to win the football game. And that's just so special is that we have a bunch of guys that when you look at, their guys have such confidence. It's like, oh, the game's close. Like, cool. I'm glad I'm on this sideline. I wouldn't want to be on the other sideline because that's what we do. We win close games and we like drama, so it's perfect. <laughs> <laughs> and you won the turnover margin. Um, you'll be first in the turnover margin in the Big 12 when the Territorial Cup. What does that mean and the importance of conference the season given you were terrible last season? Yeah, the, the buy in uh, you know, of that uh, I think is there. And obviously, I, I think I've preached it more than I did last year. I thought I did a bad job. Uh, last year, and I think you know I got better, and I think the guys are believing in it. I mean, this dude had that big play in the first half, and he's scavenger off, and I'd love somebody to pull the, fit, the footage. People start to come from behind, and he does this, crosses on the ball, right? That's growth. Like, that's what it's about. It's about getting better week by week, and nobody's going to notice him running around and then crossing the ball over. Nobody's going to talk about the play, but that's why we're winning. It's because we're growing, and we're learning, and we're getting better every week with little tiny details. Then you have X over here. I mean, he makes a play last time ever in that stadium that completely changes the game and uh, couldn't be prouder of him. Sammy, finish it up with Coach. Uh, Coach, first, can you go into the, the, uh, the onside kick explanation? How did that conversation with uh, Coach Rangel go? Yeah, so that was actually a squib kick. But when we squib it, the way they angled their dude, we said let's squib it, but we also try to hit him on the way to the squib. So if it hits him, we have a chance to recover it. But if we don't hit them, we you know recover the ball around the 30, 35 yard line. So it's a it's a very low risk onside kick. It's like, hey, if it works, whoa, well, right? If it doesn't work, they get the ball on 32, 35. So very, very low risk uh, you know, call there. And did the valley feel activated in there? You? What do you think? <laughs> <laughs> no, you can answer it. What do you think? I did think. Yeah, so did I. <laughs> I mean, what, did, what did you what did you think, JT? X, what did you think? All those people on the sideline, that's pretty good. <laughs> <laughs> now, 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 this is the question is, how expensive were these tickets, like 300 bucks? If you bought a season ticket to begin the year, right, you probably would have had to spend, what, another 150 There's going to be a lot more games that tickets get to that price. So if you want to be a part of them, you better buy season tickets. You better do it right now. You better sell it out because we're going to have a lot more games where this state wants to show up to. 
and you are going to want to have season tickets to those things because you're not going to want to have to pay $300 to get in the stadium every single time, right? So buy your season tickets. Let's make that every single week of next year because why would you not want to be in that environment? That was one of the most fun places to be in college football. Why would you not want to do that every Saturday? All it is is the fan base saying this is what we choose to do. So buy your tickets, donate to keep our team, right, and let's repeat next year, and let's try to run it back at home. Thank y'all. Go Thank Devils. You, Activate the Valley, baby. We'll have the guys stay, hang around here. Thanks, Coach. Jordan Thanks, Coach. Thank, Thank you. Are here, so any questions about Thank you. It? Sorry if we missed you out. We'll get you Monday if you missed out on Ken. Get it back to Ryan, and then Chris, do you have one? Yeah. Okay. Right. So what was it like having that touchdown? Right here. What was it like to score that touchdown? I mean, how much did you that touchdown? It's just staying ready. Uh, you know, it's playing all oh, this offense. We've got Skag, got JT, who I think are top players in their position uh, in the country. And so just being ready, and that's, how, that's just the model that you know, all our the receivers and the receiving group, uh, our receiving group, staying ready, just doing our job. And it just felt awesome that the, you know, Sam trusts me in that play. And, uh, it turned out to be a big, a big play uh, when it came down to the game. So uh, it felt great. Man, I was trying to get going as soon as I caught it. I was, <laughs> but it was an awesome feeling, kind of scoring and um, just helping the team. Today. All right, Ryan, and then get it back to Shane for me if we can. Thank for, you. For both of you guys, gotcha. uh, After Ryan. Coach mentioned the growth each week in Jordan you crossing the ball over to avoid the fumble. For the wide receiver group, a big game for you guys both today. What do you think was the biggest part of, part of your growth that you saw in today's win? Um, definitely just um, the crossing ball. That's a big one. I have two fun, two big fumbles on the year that kind of kept balance the game. Um, so just just keeping the ball, the ball, the ball, the ball. That's one of our that's one of our key topics in in um, our team meetings. So that's one of them. And just the details, fundamentals, route depth, stuff like that. Just just all the little stuff. Just all the little stuff matters. The big stuff's kind of easy, but little stuff really matters. Yeah, we just want to do stuff that like. When you watch our film, you want our film to be different. That's uh, something Coach Ward always says. Just blocking, you know, running, running down, blocking down the field. Um, you know, just playing for uh, with high energy and playing for each other. So we just want our film to look different uh, from the rest. If you watch any other receivers in the country, we want our our, our tape to pop off, and uh, it shows up on Saturday. You know, came down, you know, they came down to the to the wire, and they trusted us to help help us win the game. So, so we just want uh, to you know continue that and you know, just got us together. So a bright future ahead of him, especially with uh, Coach Ward developing him. So I'm excited to see that and just to see the growth of his receivers. So, Shane? You guys, both, you guys have both had journeys here, unique journeys. Can you guys both speak on what it's like being on the other side of it now? 9-2, for a big 12 title game this week. Yeah, so I actually went to Idaho State before this, and I went to BYU and lost like 77 to like 7 or something. Like something crazy. So it felt awesome just to be here with uh, with the team that you know everybody's body and nobody really tripping over their own personal accolades and we just all playing for each other. You know this is like this is something special that we got here and the players that we got and the coaches that we have and stuff. So it feels awesome to be on this side and I'm just thankful. I just wake up, be thankful to be here and it's, it's an honor. Shane, if we can get your mic to Devin. Can I ask and Jay? Question? Oh yeah, sorry, Drew. Um, it's it's amazing, bro. Um, for like me, like my situation, bro, with ACL, MCL, PCL, scope, bro, like. You're not supposed to come back and do this, bro. Like, it's not human life, bro. It's all God, bro. God, and he had a list break injury, bro. Like, one of the rarest injuries you can find, bro. It's, it's not human life to come back and do these things that we're doing. It's, it's all God, and um, it's just yeah. amazing to be on the other side. Right here, guys. Question for both of you guys. We'll start with Xavier. Obviously, Kenny Dillingham coming into this season wanted to really activate the Valley, and you guys and the entire home state went undefeated. So again, I'll start with you, Xavier, because you were a senior this year. Yeah. What does it mean in order to live up to what Kenny Dillingham said and be able to win every game at home? It means a lot just because, I mean, you see the scores, you see all like the cool touchdowns, and but you got like nobody was there when we was in Camp T, you know, just sleeping on a you know, tissue paper, and, <laughs> like climbing in the woods, or you know, all the Coach Joe conditioning drills. So we literally started from our foundation, like completely erased it, eradicated it, and started new. So, you know, building from the ground up, it's just awesome to see what, like, our work, the right work, not just working hard, but the right work that is coming to fruition. All our hard work is paying off, and this is awesome to be a part of, and I, I wouldn't want to do it with anybody else. Jordan? Um, it's amazing. Um, just activating the Valley Aguilar, that was the craziest thing I've been a part of. Yeah. Uh, 
Aaron Crowd getting loud, our crowd getting loud, BYU, ASU, bro. Like, that was amazing to be a part of, and I'm glad we came out with it. Get the mic up to Michael here. Um, and then Devin, go ahead. So for both of you guys, it's not two straight games in which you've had, in which you've had big leads, and then you know it's gotten more challenging in the second half. How frustrating is it as an offense when you know it's not flowing as easily in the second half? And how do you guys fight through that? Part of the game, man. It's just yeah, it happens, and we we'd be naive to think that we were just gonna blow out every single team. So what happens? We've blown out teams. We we literally had any times we had close games, blowouts. We came back like. You know, our team is just resilient no matter what situation. So we just go out there, put our helmets on, and just do what we do. We go out there and practice. Practices are sometimes more intense than like what we feel out there. So when we go out there, we're just calm and stuff. So no frustration. Yeah, you get a little like a little mad, but we go on, when we get on that field, we, we completely trust each other. We know what we can do. We trust our coaches. We trust, we trust the players. We go out there and execute. Um, yeah, um, kind of different situation than last week. Um, this week, I feel like we got there, we was moving the ball very efficiently. And then just at the end, like the end, we got to the fourth and goal. We got to the opposite 40, I think. Um, but last week, I feel like we just played a little conservative. So I don't think it's not on offense. I think it's just comes with the game, like he said. And the second question, that last fourth down call for you guys as receivers, you know, do you guys get nervous when you hear that play call come in? Oh, uh, yeah, sometimes. It depends. Because, like, I know, like, we're going to call a play, like, the whole week, and I'll be – about oh what release I'm gonna get what move I'm gonna get at the top um, and stuff like that but um I try to keep it down um and this later season not not as much as this beginning yeah Mike and Jordan you can go ahead and take off thank you for your time next week when you guys start in the game too the complimentary football coach have talked about all year but it just seemed like this this big winning stretch I mean defense gets a stop on fourth down and then you guys go down the field and score but when you guys are playing complimentary football like that what is like each side of the ball how does it help pick up the other side of the ball it's just you know we're all cohesive we're all one unit we feel like there's no like a oh, defense offense like like some some from my experience at other schools uh it just felt like two separate teams but we're all like literally one unit and when defense is up the receivers everybody's watching like we're on the field and so, so it was awesome to see like the defense do their job and the offense go out and execute. Or if defense doesn't do the job, we the first thing we say we got y'all back. We don't go down. We throw a pick or something. Defense, but we got y'all back. Like it's like that locker room. Y'all been in our locker room. It's so tight knit. Like we're actually brothers. Like some of these dudes be at my wedding one day. I'm sure I'll be at some of theirs. And like we're really, uh, we're really close. And it's my senior year. I wish I could like have more time. But it's been awesome being with this group, and I've been cherishing it every day. Does anyone else have a question? Good. Awesome. Awesome. Yeah. 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 All right.